Um, and I think they have uh, more infrastructure to put in place before they want that to happen. Um, so, you know, I think people should essentially consider, uh, you know, this crisis is very real. Now is the time to prepare because there is a lull, but it is a planned lull. And after the lull is going to come a planned controlled demolition. The collapse has begun and you must prepare for what's coming next. The signs are everywhere. Financial markets are in turmoil. Trust in our institutions is at an all-time low, and the foundations of our economic system are starting to crack. This isn't just a blip. It's a systemic crisis that's been brewing for years, and now we're at the tipping point. Whitney Webb, an investigative journalist known for her in-depth research and fearless reporting, has been warning us about these developments for a long time. Today, we're going to dive into her analysis of the unfolding collapse, what it means for the average person, and most importantly, how this crisis is being used by the powerful to reshape society in ways that benefit them at the expense of everyone else. To understand why the collapse has begun, we need to take a step back and look at the big picture. The economic system we live under today is built on a foundation of debt, mountains of it. Governments, corporations, and individuals are all swimming in debt and it's gotten to the point where the entire system is incredibly fragile. Any small shock could bring the whole house of cards tumbling down. It's like standing on the edge of a cliff, and one push could send us into a freefall. Because the federal government was essentially signaling, if you go to one of these too big to fail mega banks, your money will be safe. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it's hard not to see this as a concerted policy push to get people to feel like their money is only safe in one yep. of these giant mega banks that's on board for uh, these agendas, whether it's CBDCs or biometric payments, programmable money. Um, and I think it's pretty clear that, that Jamie Dimon is definitely going to be on board for all of that. So, you know, if you're going to put your money with J.P. Morgan Chase because you think it'll be safe, well, yeah, it might be safe in a sense, but at what cost ultimately to your economic freedom and your civil liberties? You know, I think these are the questions that people should be, uh, you know, asking themselves. In her work, Whitney Webb has often highlighted the interconnectedness of our global financial system and the risks posed by unchecked power in both government and finance. Central banks like the Federal Reserve have been pumping trillions of dollars into the economy through quantitative easing. And what have we gotten in return? Asset bubbles, inflated housing prices, and a massive wealth gap. The top 1% has seen their wealth soar, while the average person struggles with stagnant wages and rising costs of living. The problems we're facing today are not new. They have been building up for years, even decades. After the 2008 financial crisis, the world's biggest economies took drastic steps to save the financial system. But instead of addressing the root causes of the problem, they put a bandage over it. The money printing spree and ultra low interest rates may have kept the economy afloat temporarily, but they have also created massive bubbles in everything from real estate to stocks to corporate debt. Now those bubbles are starting to burst and we're all feeling the effects. Take a look at the recent bank collapses, Signature Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, and others. These were just the beginning. What we're seeing is a domino effect, a sign that the system is starting to come apart at the seams. Banks that once seemed rock solid are now failing, and the repercussions are going to be felt by everyone. These bank failures are not isolated events. They are symptoms of a much larger problem. The financial system is built on trust, and when that trust starts to erode, it doesn't take long for panic to set in. People rush to withdraw their money, banks run out of cash, and before you know it, the entire system is in crisis. And the thing is, the government can't keep bailing out these banks forever. At some point, the money runs out and the consequences become unavoidable. But it's not just the banks. The broader economy is also showing signs of collapse. Inflation is eating away at the value of your savings. Prices for basic goods, food, energy, housing are skyrocketing. And the government response? Print more money, which only makes inflation worse. It's a vicious cycle, and there's no easy way out. Whitney Webb has argued that these economic crises are not just accidental. They are the result of deliberate policies and a power grab by the elites. This crisis is being used to consolidate power in the hands of a few at the expense of the many. It's no coincidence that while people are struggling to make ends meet, 
giant corporations are raking in record profits and government surveillance is increasing. So what we're having are two parallel things going on. There's this push to digitalize everything. Yeah. To get all of the money, no more cash. It's all online. Yeah. The whole economy has to go online. Everyone has to go online for, for work and this and that. There's this push to di make everything exist in the digital realm as part of the 4IR, the fourth industrial revolution and all this stuff, right? And at the same time, we are having, a, on, the, on the flip side, a concerted push by governments around the world to uh, completely control the digital realm. So the censorship stuff we were talking about earlier is part of that. But there's also these big efforts to end uh, financial anonymity to end uh, just privacy online, have your, gov your internet activity or your social media accounts tied to a government issued ID. Consider the rise of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. On the surface, they may sound like a convenient replacement for physical cash, but in reality, they represent a new level of control. CBDCs give governments and central banks the ability to track every transaction, freeze accounts, and impose negative interest rates all at the click of a button. Whitney Webb has been vocal about the dangers of CBDCs, pointing out how they could be used to limit individual freedoms and further entrench the power of those at the top. With a CBDC, governments can essentially decide how and when you can spend your money. Imagine a world where your spending is restricted based on what the government deems appropriate. If they want you to buy less meat, they could limit your purchases. If they decide you're saving too much and not spending enough, they could impose a negative interest rate that eats away at your savings. This kind of control over people's financial lives is unprecedented, and it's something we should all be deeply concerned about. Well, I mean, I think it's naive to think that they wouldn't do that. I mean, if something, if you, if a tool is created to stick it, right, to commercial and central banks and like prevent malfeasance on their part, if they can co-opt it, to become part of their system and part of their malfeasance and enable their mal malfeasance, they will definitely do that. It's not like they're yeah. going to be like, oh, well, you invented Bitcoin, you got us. You know, that's not <laughs> how these guys. This economic collapse isn't happening in a vacuum. There are other crises unfolding simultaneously that compound the problem. We have supply chain disruptions, geopolitical tensions, and climate related disasters. It's a perfect storm and it's becoming increasingly clear that those in power have no real plan to help the average person. Take the war in Ukraine, for example. It's not just a regional conflict, it has global ramifications. The sanctions on Russia have led to energy shortages and rising prices in Europe. The war has also disrupted the global food supply, leading to shortages and price hikes for basic staples like wheat and fertilizer. These disruptions are hitting the poorest, the hardest, and are accelerating the collapse of the fragile economic system. Whitney Webb has also discussed how crises like these are often used to justify power grabs. We saw it during the 2008 financial crisis when massive bailouts were handed out to Wall Street while Main Street was left to fend for itself, and we're seeing it again now. Every new crisis is an opportunity for those in power to consolidate even more control, whether through emergency powers, new regulations, or increased surveillance. This time, it's not just about financial power, it's also about controlling information and ensuring that people remain dependent on the system. During times of crisis, governments often introduce emergency measures that are supposed to be temporary, but end up becoming permanent. We're seeing this play out right now with more surveillance, more control over speech, and more intrusion into our personal lives. Whitney Webb has done extensive research on the collaboration between tech companies and governments to develop surveillance technologies. The line between the public and private sectors is blurring, and companies like Google, Facebook, and Palantir are working hand-in-hand -hand with intelligence agencies. This kind of mass surveillance infrastructure is incredibly dangerous in the hands of those who are seeking to consolidate power during a time of economic crisis. If I can add something on the border really quick. So the whole mess on the border too, in terms of its intentionality. So it's not just happening in the US, it's, a, it's happening sim in similar ways in a lot of other countries. In my opinion, this is one of the main ways they're going to shoehorn in 
digital ID. We have to know who everyone is because there's too many migrants and we have to know who has what rights and who can do what. And so we all need digital ID for everybody. That's biometric and all of this stuff. And I'm sure they'll invent something like, oh, there's fraud, there's fake IDs. We have to have secure, interoperable IDs, just like a designed by ID 2020 and then SGG 16 and whatever. Yeah, so that's definitely going to be part of it. And then you have this whole added thing of like something crazy is obviously going to happen with the economy next year, whether it's provoked by a cyber attack or whatever. The way the UN, UNICEF, World Food Program has set up all of their stuff for humanitarian aid is the world coin model, which is scan your eyeball and we give you a digital ID and that tells us whether or not you eat or not. You know, if you want to get your rations, you have to go to the wherever the rations are and have your eyeball scanned. And if there's a mistake in the system and it decides you're not you, no food for you. And this has happened in India's digital ID system at hard to like a significant degree. And they haven't fixed it and they don't do anything about it. And they justified it by saying that like people's data will be safer and more secure. It's the most easily hackable thing in the world. There was like a, a big, big time like Indian CEO guy that was like, I'm publicly gonna like put up my ad horror id number and like look how safe it is and it was like hacked in like 10 minutes and people like trolled the crud out of him the recent push for digital ids is another example of how the elites are using the current crisis to expand their control digital ids are being introduced under the guise of making our lives easier and more secure but they also have a darker side with a digital id every aspect of your life can be tracked monitored and controlled. Your financial transactions, medical history, travel, and even your social interactions could be linked to this one ID, giving those in power an unprecedented level of control over your life. The elites understand that in times of crisis, people are willing to trade freedom for security. They use fear, fear of economic collapse, fear of pandemics, fear of war, to push through measures that would never be accepted under normal circumstances. Whitney Webb has pointed out that this tactic has been used time and again, and we are seeing it play out now with the introduction of digital IDs, CBDCs, and increased surveillance. Let's talk about the media's role in all of this. The mainstream media is owned by a handful of corporations, and they have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. They are not going to tell you the truth about what's really happening. They will tell you that everything is under control, that the government has a plan, and that there's nothing to worry about. But the reality is very different. The media serves as a mouthpiece for those in power, shaping the narrative to keep people complacent and distracted. Whitney Webb has emphasized the importance of independent media and critical thinking. The mainstream media often portrays these crises as isolated incidents but they are all interconnected. The same elites who control the financial system also have their hands in the media, big tech and government. It's all part of the same power structure and understanding this is key to seeing through the lies and propaganda. The collapse is also exposing the deep inequalities in our society. While the elites are making plans to ride out the storm, building luxury bunkers, buying up land in remote areas and hoarding resources, the average person is left to fend for themselves. The wealth gap is wider than ever. The current crisis is only making it worse. The people who are already struggling are the ones who will be hit the hardest while the rich continue to get richer. Whitney Webb has spoken about how the elites are using this crisis to reshape society in a way that benefits them. The idea of you will own nothing and be happy is being pushed more and more. The concept of private property is under attack, with more people being forced into renting rather than owning. This isn't just happening with homes, it's happening with cars, appliances, and even furniture. The idea is to create a society where everything is owned by a few giant corporations and everyone else is just a renter, dependent on those corporations for everything. This shift is about more than just money, it's about control, when you own nothing, you are completely dependent on the system. You have no power, no leverage, and no independence. And that's exactly what the elites want. They want a society where they control everything and everyone else is completely dependent on them. The collapse isn't something that's going to happen overnight. 
It's a slow, grinding process that will unfold over months and years. We're already seeing the early stages, but there's much more to come. The financial system is cracking, the social fabric is fraying, and the elites are making their moves to consolidate power. We must be aware of what's happening. We must understand that this isn't just a random series of unfortunate events. It's a deliberate power grab. The collapse has begun, and the decisions being made right now will determine the kind of world we live in for decades to come. Whitney Webb's work has shown us that the elites are not going to let a good crisis go to waste, and they are using this moment to reshape society in their favor.